common questions we get asked in the hobby is how do I get my nitrates lower? Well, first of all, nitrates and phosphates are quite heavily interlinked, so make sure you watch our other video on phosphates as well. Where people have got a problem with nitrates, they often attribute it to the amount of food that you put into the aquarium, and that is really not usually the case. If you've got a problem with nitrates, there's a problem with your filtration, not with the nutrient input. In a fully functioning, well thought out and designed aquarium, you can put in a huge amount of food, and some of our systems handle as much as an entire pack of frozen food per 200 litres or 55 US gallons per day, and still run at under one on nitrates. The bacteria will be able to multiply to any level quite quickly to cope with the amount of nitrates as long as you keep the other parameters stable and provide plenty of space for those bacteria to live. So how do you get nitrates down? Well, if you've got runaway nitrate issues, the first thing is you probably find that you've got an issue with your phosphate being too low. When you add food to the aquarium, for every 16 parts of nitrate you add, you add around two parts of phosphate. For the bacteria in your aquarium, for each 16 nitrate they eat, they eat around one phosphate, which would eat all the nitrate and leave a small amount of phosphate behind, which is best removed with an aluminium-based phosphate remover, which is little white balls you can just run them immediately. However, a lot of people use macroalgae to bring it down, but the problem is that macroalgae for every 16 ppm of nitrate they eat, they eat 4 ppm of phosphate. So by the time they've used up the two phosphate you've added, they've only eaten half of the nitrate, and this can lead to nitrate accumulating in the aquarium over time, which can cause you a problem. So first of all, make sure you're not using too much macroalgae, and you're not being too aggressive with phosphate removal in other ways. If you're using an iron-based phosphate remover, I'd either remove the phosphate remover entirely or switch to an aluminium-based one. If you're using a liquid-based phosphate remover, I would stop and switch to a solid-based one. Doing that will allow the phosphates to rise a little bit and those nitrates to fall away. Secondly, you want to make sure you're not getting microparticles of food rotting within the aquarium, which can cause you nitrates. That is the sort of common source of the problem. So ensure you have really good mechanical filtration. Filter floss is by far the best outperforming any sock on the market or other forms of mechanical uh, filtration of water. So use filter floss to get all those microparticles out. Avoid foods which are very messy, such as some very polluting coral foods. Natural seawater can be a high source of small particles as well, or a large amount of flake food. Once you've got all those small particles out of the water, ensure you have enough cleanup crews. So make sure you have enough Nacera snails and conchas to clear up all those little food particles so they aren't rotting and creating nitrate. That's stage one, so you're now reducing the amount of tiny particles being allowed to decompose within the aquarium. Stage two is making sure that you have enough places for those, bacteria, for those denitrifying bacteria to live. Now we would recommend a two-prong approach to that. One is to use a good quality ceramic media. We do our own by Hula. There are other similar products on the market. That's the one we use and the one that we've found to be the most effective. They're providing a home for this type of bacteria. And if you use a substantial quantity of that, around half a litre per 100 litres of aquarium water, then that will easily provide enough bacteria to house the denitrifying bacteria you need. Also ensure your sand bed is the correct size and depth. You want something that's really fine, as fine as cast to sugar. A coarser sand bed would need to be much deeper for the denitrifying bacteria to work properly. A coarser sand bed also traps a lot of those small particles that we've already tried to remove using other methods. So switching your sand bed out to a super fine layer of sand, one to one and a half inches deep, will often give you a really good home for those bacteria to live. If you're using a coarser sand, you need a much deeper sand bed and that's much more complicated to maintain. Super fine sand also doesn't trap as many particles, any waste sits on top and whisks away. And it won't blow all around your aquarium if your flow is set up correctly. Flow won't move sand, only turbulence will. So now that you've, got, uh, you've removed all the microparticles from the water, You've balanced your phosphate and your nitrate at a reasonable level, so there's a little bit of phosphate there. And you've ensured that there's plenty of places for the bacteria to live. You should find the nitrate falls away quite quickly, and within six weeks you'll be running under 1 ppm. If you find that, that isn't the case, you might need to top up on bacteria. We do our own live bottled one called Revolution, which we use in all our aquariums, and many hobbyists have been using for a very long time now. And by dosing that daily to start with and weekly after that, it's a very cheap, quick and easy way 
to increase the numbers of those denitrifying bacteria in the aquarium and watch those nitrates fall away. We've seen customers with tanks over 200 ppm drop below 1 ppm within a matter of a few weeks and stay there forevermore, basically. So, uh, yeah, so when it comes to contracting nitrate, make sure you pay attention that you haven't bottomed out your phosphates to zero. Remove all the microparticles that you can. Ensure the bacteria have enough places to live. And ensure you have enough cleanup crew to do with any particles of food which are left over. If you do that, you'll be able to increase feeding to truly dramatic levels, which will give you much better looking fish and much better little corals without wrecking your water parameters. Make sure, of course, you check out our other video on phosphate because the two are often interlinked, and all our other videos in the series of Ask James.